Good morning, guys. Um, I'm going to share a dream I had with you early this morning. And I woke up and it was 3.18. Um, I'm going to kind of read it because it's going to be just a little bit easier. But on this dream, the Lord said, prepare for battle. And then I was just having this dream and he gave me some scriptures and I woke up and I was like, Okay, God. So, here it is. The scriptures were Genesis, Joshua, Jeremiah, and Revelation 12. I, I get it. They're long. I looked them up this morning. I haven't really got into the depth of them that I need to, and I will for me. But he just said, get it out. And then he said, we need spears, swords, and clouds. We will need. Okay, God, listen, that was early in prayer once I got up, okay, because he was kind of helping me formulate this message in this dream. The sword of the Spirit, the plows for the harvest, break up the fallow ground, the stony ground. The sword of the Spirit, his unchanging word, will purify, cut deeper than a two-edged sword, piercing our hearts, washing us with the water of the word and rivers of living water. The spear to pierce the darkness, show people the direction to go, and it will be covered under the blood of the lamb and will be a light in the dark days ahead, a lamp under our feet, light for our path, and the world will see the light and we will be the light. And then he took me to this Lightning and storm, his power, grace, glory, majesty. But first, we must be, become pure, no more idolatry in our hearts, in our land, in our world, guys. Okay, so this was a dream I had. I'm just going to put it out there, guys. This is going to be a short video, probably. Um, and I don't know why, but I need to probably add this one thing to it. Um, like I said, I'm just, you know, I got a pretty full plate today. I've got to meet some people. I've just got a lot of things going on. I'm like, I'm like, God, and I want, I want to complain, but it was like, man, I can't, I just sleep a little bit. What, you know, and sometimes I'll get up at three or whatever and, Try to get up at five for the five a.m. prayer, but sometimes I sleep till seven. But that's the biggest important thing is that he's telling me to put out there to get the people as a nation to pray at five in the morning in the world even. But get up, guys. Pray with me. I don't always. I try to. But there's an importance to it because wherever two or more gather together in my name, I poke my head out my door and look at my address 3108 in my street yours is probably different but you know what i'll still see you there god will see us there let's get together we're going to get our solutions and answers in this in prayer seeking god jesus the holy ghost and his word not in a government you know of course i'm not telling you not to vote but my vote is for jesus not a man i'm gonna pray for present just like everybody else and our leaders but man this is this is part of a shaking guys it's a stripping away but it's just a prelude to what's coming and there might be a day where we can't work I'm not talking about this shutdown lockdown because that's all demonic anyhow but that's you know I, I will say this. I'll throw this one in there. This one's free. I'm not wearing a mask, Kimo Sabe. You get my point? Look at the one, some of my videos, you know. I'm just saying no. I already got a vaccine. His name is Jesus. I'm not mocking, knocking any of that stuff. I'll do the social distancing and all this other stuff. You know, I'll try to be as cautious as possible to help protect people too. Mindful of that. But at the same time, 
I'm not calling down and changing who I am. It's a child of a child of the King. Jesus is Jesus is still Lord. One hour in my life, of course not. But some of y'all, maybe he was your whole life. Let me end with this, guys. Because all this surrealness, we're gonna get, we're gonna get through and to the cross and our answers from him. Not from who we sit under, what building we're in, what ministry we're in, even including ours. Nothing about that anymore, guys. Look around. Seriously. Just take, I mean, you don't even have to be serious about it. Just look around where are all these big, powerful, supposed Some of them didn't even call themselves churches, but whatever they were. Where is all that today? Mm, the proof's in the pudding. That's one of my messages. But what I'm seeing is some really cool, awesome, powerful testimonies from different people. Seemingly small and insignificant. No, we're not. Nothing is insignificant. That's one of my messages. Don't take it lightly. Why are we looking for a building when we're the building? The one that he created to dwell in. I, you know, yeah, I'm not saying don't gather. That's not my point, guys. Don't go down that rabbit hole. I'm not either. That's not what I'm saying because I get strength. I get lifted up. I get joy from seeing others that are moving in the Lord. And it, it encourages me uplifts me, helps me, strengthens me. So, you know, I'm not saying that. <clears throat> but what I'm saying is our true power is going to come from our prayer and seeking him for direction because then he's going to direct us who to talk with, who to be with, who to partner with, who to gather with, who to... <clears throat> all of this stuff. The enemy's been lying to us, guys. Okay, this is where I'm going to end because... It's relevant to this. A couple days ago, I'm just this natural, but it's not. There's a message in it. I'm just driving to the store. I gotta go get mail. I gotta go to two different stores. Well, so I go to the first one, and then I kind of got a little route, you know, that I'm planning, and then I could come back, and I'm gonna come back a different way down a different street because it's just the way that I'm gonna go. It's all, you know, 10, 15 minutes away. It's not a big deal, but... So I'm driving down this road. And I just look to my left, glance to my left. And I was, you know, good half a block away. A little cul-de-sac. And it's almost... In Dallas here, once a month, they let you put out bulk trash. I'm not sure about where you live, but... And there was a, a nice-looking shelf sitting on top of this pile of trash people started putting out. Or it looked nice, and you know, I'm kind of needing some shelves right now for some various different things I'm doing, some at home and some in the helps ministry, and just, so it's like, okay, so, I'm like, well, let me just turn around and stop, and I'm like, no, nah, I kind of just, I had a lot of stuff I was doing, I'm like, it'll be there tomorrow or next couple days or whatever when I got more time. I kind of was on, I had some other stuff I was doing. Besides the store, the store was just a, I stopped, distraction, sort of, but I had to get it done before the traffic hit. Uh, so I kept going, and the Lord was like, now go back. So I'm like, okay, well, it's a little out of the way, and I go to the store, so I go to the second store, I come back. This is my point, guys, okay? <clears throat> it's in the listening. Okay, I thought it was for the shelf. I, I go to pull up. And I did get the shelf, but I'll end with that that part of it. But I pull up, go to pull up, I pull up into this cully sack, and it's there's a dog, part pit bull, or like a breed, chained to a fence, wooden fence in the front yard. And the chain was this long, guys, not even maybe six inches. His head was stuck to the fence. It was panting. It couldn't even, couldn't even breathe. It was, it's, 
It was on its hind legs, its legs couldn't even touch the ground. Like, man, I can't get this dog. Might bite me. You know, I'm not gonna knock on these people's houses. You know, everybody's kind of a little off right now with all this surreal stuff going on. I don't know what's, you know. So, I call, try to find the pound. Won't answer. Call 311. No answer. That's the local Dallas number, you know, for help. So, I'm like, man, this is kind of an emergency, but not really, but... You know, yes it, yes, it is. I just need to get a hold of somebody to save this dog's life. Call 911. Well, you got to call 311. I, I get that, sir, but they won't answer. I'm not, I'm not trying to be, and not, this is not, not a police emergency necessarily, but it is. You know, this dog dying. Well, you have to call 311. He hangs up on me. I'm like, man, I got one. So I call again, 311, and finally they answer. It's not them, it's just that everything's all surreal and closed up and locked up and all this mess. And the lady was nice, but you could tell she was kind of trying to do her job, and she was very nice, actually. And she finally kept, and then she's like, does a dog have water for I'm like, ma'am, it's dying. Can't even breathe, its face is stuck to the fence. It's on its hind leg, it can't even put its legs down. So she said, okay, so she called and nobody would answer, same thing, but she said, you're gonna put in an emergency request. And I was like, okay, thank you, I appreciate it. I knew God was gonna take care of it. So I went and picked up the shelf, pulled up my car, fit in there. It was a nice shelf actually, guys, and it fit perfectly for what I wanted to do. It was a little small shelf and it was in great shape and it was like, so I'm thinking I'm going to do one thing, but God, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. We're going to get it in prayer. I know that's kind of a, you know, it's a dog thing, but you know, how much more important are our lives and people's lives and the things we're doing? And I went back about an hour later just to make sure to check on the dog and it was gone. So I'm pretty sure the people from the pile came and got it. Hopefully they did, honestly, because people weren't taking care of it. But I, you know, I'm trying to get anybody in trouble or anything, but man, they just, they, they were dogging the dog. And I love dogs. I got a love dog myself. Some of y'all that have dogs don't realize that they're part of the family, you know? So it's like, man, how could people be so cruel? But I, I, you know, I know I get there's a lot going on. So anyhow, what I'm saying, guys, is don't take things lightly. And just trust in him. Love you.